hello and welcome everyone right now at the RTS channels. I'm just now switching and filling up at the last moment as unfortunately Chrono had to leave, but we are ready to fill up with any kind of rather fill up any kind of problems like this. So let's get ready and start with the second game of our match between Bait 2 and their opponents from Absolutes B. Fortunately I haven't noticed what the first map or rather how the first map finished. So I actually don't know who won, so I haven't put it onto the score. So it's going to be Frozen Waste as the first map for me, and it's going to be Odin, double OK. Well, that's definitely making sense for Frozen Waste for F2. And for Absolutes, we are looking at double OK and Oranos. So let's see if the Oranos or the Odin is going to be the better choice in here. But looking at the players overall, definitely interesting names in here. For F2, we are looking at the player who is guesting for them this time around. And Popsy and 7up, these are basically the standard players for their clan. And on the other side, we are looking at Sudden Moves, who is Thomas Shelby, then Icaro and Hero OP. So double French with a Georgian. Uh, Hero OP is Georgian, Maracroman is Armenian, right? If I remember it correctly. And this is definitely going to be a map favoring aggressive matchup, which is something that you'd like to see. It's usually a lot more engaging than some battles from uh, some Egyptians and such. In the meantime, a bit of communication apparently by F2s going on halfway on the chat and on the Skype. Some such seems like that somebody doesn't have microphone like for example Popsy. Uh, but definitely a very nice spawn right now for 7up, who is going to be quite happy about a big gold right next to his base. And the little one is going to be slightly lesser safe, or rather lesser safe, not, not so safe. And admit, getting kind of tired apparently today after all the streaming. I've already streamed two matches of Age of Empires and this is the second one of Age of Mythology. So actually quite some hours already clocked in for RTS League. And the first relic is going to be for Midnight Rush Armor. So here again, the Saki relic in here that I still don't know if it works on Titans or not. In the end, we are right now switching on to Thomas Shelby, who is going to be the one facing again 7-up. Having nice gold, reasonably face. Face, no, apparently... Uh, Safe. <laughs> they were almost the same letters, but different order apparently. Doesn't have the big gold, but it's not such a big problem because of course this is actually one of the better golds on Frozen Ways. Because usually all of them spawn quite close by to the eye so that they are actually readable, exactly like this one. But yeah, having it in the middle, protected basically by the towers. Not bad, not bad at all. The pocket player is going to be Icaro as the Oranos. Yeah, well why not? This actually could be quite dangerous for the opponent's fate too, because of course this will mean that the Oranos will probably be having a very easy boom and it will be attempting faster heroic or faster. It's not really faster heroic for Atlanteans. It's normal heroic for Atlanteans, but it's basically just faster than everybody else. That's how strong their early economy is. And then from that it might be quite decent mythical age at like maybe even 12 minutes. Something like that. 11-12 minutes is pretty much a good uh, mythical age that Atlanteans can master and tartaring it at that stage of the game is usually quite deadly if you are also applying, applying proper pressure on the opponent's basis. In the end Hero OP on the right flank, having discovered the front gold, that is in the unsafe position exactly as is back gold, yeah, this is exactly how the golds usually spawn, basically the same as for player at the bottom. For 7up at the bottom, I'm right now looking at the player who I want to switch to and he is having, having the same gold, so yeah. That's basically right now only Thomas Shelby having the lucky one that is not hugging the eyes all that much. So 7-up, great hunt, getting a lot of goatees and we're not having any kind of shifting sense because we are not having Egyptians and that means not any kind of stealing shenanigans like at all. Ravens coming in from the Odin so that he can scout and know where to raid as fast as possible which is of course not going to be that easy even though it might as right now properly switching into the middle of the map and where is he actually going to the left yes he is this is from tc of course actually nicely positioned natural choke point that's usually where you want such buildings so that's not bad at all and it's of course right next to the gold mine as well so potentially a bit of a problem for no sudden moves aka the must shall be if he happens to lose this position which i'm kind of thinking might be the case but let's not get ahead of ourselves because of course loki with his mythical units can be capable of defending quite all right. This is the Saki relic. This is a good relic. In percent building hit points. Next one is for what? Village of Wood and Gold Cadrates. Thank you very much. Infantry hack armor. That's 
That's actually pretty huge considering that we are having four Lokis on this map plus Odin and the Odin is gonna quite assuredly spam Ufsarks. I don't really expect anything else from him. And one of the players that we haven't actually looked at as 7up is advancing very much the first into the classic rage is green player Popsy who is still advancing just now going to be entering the force at the age and having also basically the same gold as all the other players but Thomas Shelby. The second temple just now being finished unfortunately he has managed to house himself <laughs> so he needs to hurry up with the house he's managing just fine not to house himself all that badly but of course it slows down his temple and that's not great not that great he would be hoping that he already has some army ready for himself and there is faster methino training time that's actually pretty significant it doesn't really matter that it's going to be picked up by loki uh, but yeah for any norse player it could be helping because if you can get those battle bars in the heroic age quarter times faster than otherwise then it might be giving you a pretty nice power spy that will be turning into some kind of significant advantage in the first battles in the heroic ages so of course a bit of a fun right now valkyrie against hersir valkyrie going to be calling it today pretty soon yeah that's pretty sloppy by seven up right now seven eight points that's just going to be really fightable yeah doesn't matter at all even unless unless he gets another another valkyrie which might be happening but not really expecting it all that much because it's costing a lot of food and that's not a resource that he wants to waste all that much he will be probably I mean, follow sucks exactly a few army or other little army of some heresies to protect against the mythical spawns that are bound to come from Thomas Shelby and of course this is going to result in those spied villagers having to retreat as this is not a safe spot for them anymore in the meantime what has to be said is that actually the pocket player Icaro or Absolat is basically developing himself forward quite strongly right now even pushing of the berries inside the base that doesn't really happen all that often Oracle's coming in, that's already the second one, third one is on the left, that's now scouting next to, what is it, next to the town center. And his army already coming into the middle, they have gotten rid of the Valkyrie, that was almost dead anyway. And what are they going to be finding? I kind of, yeah, he's going into the middle, he's going to be trying to stop player from helping into the, into the fight on the left, because he's definitely full on in there. So that was basically a double on Thomas Shelby. So Shelby, yeah, well... Let's gonna get rid of the house. That's it. But it of course, at the same time, he probably should have continued, I'm thinking. Because since there was still still a threat of the fire, it meant that those heresies couldn't have attacked him. And he maybe, just maybe, could have gotten rid of it, but he opted not to, and that basically means that this forest fire is Yeah, wasted. <laughs> it's right now pretty much wasted. Not really seen. What kind of purpose did it serve all that much? And well, we are gonna be waiting. What else is going to be happening on the map? Of course, since the double is happening from F2 on the left, it's, they are going to be double on the right. So Popsy is going to be having a pretty tough game right now facing both yellow and teal. But of course, he was already counting with that. And that is the reason why he's having the walls. But apparently, that's still quite far away. He's gonna save something. Not really all that much of all that many villagers. Yeah, that's what happens. That's what happens when you actually clump your army with a stupid troll. <laughs> Which is like one of the last units that you want to clump when you are retreating from an attack. All the units were just coming as the last unit. And that was even on top of that slowed by the fact that it's under attack. So that was like, yeah, you could have seen it. It was barely moving. It was barely moving and such misplays are costing a lot of villages. Exactly like this. This is about one, two, three. Or five, about five to six villagers and a rocks card on the hunt. So good luck, Popsy. I'm thinking that right now, actually, Absolutes would do well to continue with their push because, of course, this is going to be putting Popsy back quite significantly, even though there is some kind of attempt at trading. Icaro is well on top of it. Uh, Red is not going to be having any kind of luck with that. And Blue is switching it to right as well. So apparently, it's a full switch into right battlefield. Not going to be continuing with the left side like at all. There is Thomas Shelby is using this opportunity quite nicely. Ganging up poor guy in here. And oh, this is wide open. This is very wide open. Both the gold and and the wood line with Popsy and player coming for the watchtowers. But the only one who definitely needs them right about now, like 
exactly now at this moment. <laughs> He's not having it. But of course, pretty decent amount of already that throw in axemen ready for this army. And unfortunately, not much of an engagement to be had. Do spawn some much needed mythic units, which could have been then in the battle around and helping him quite significantly. So he has to retreat. But of course, pretty decent radiant army right now in the middle of player. And so far, even though. Actually, even though this is this should be home map of Absolats, right? It should. Those have to are the home team, so they should have been chosen the first map. So hopefully they are. Maybe you will know in the chat, but I don't really remember because I, I was teaming on the match. So this should be the home map of Absolats, and they definitely know what they're doing, and they're so far doing it quite well indeed. So this wasn't that well micro by Alcaro. Not only got himself between the town center and the tower just being researched. But also between the armies, and that cost them quite significant amount of units overall. But it also results into this, because that was an army lured away from Seven Up's base, and he's basically just right now getting hammered quite significantly by Thomas Shelby, who is getting the mythical spawns that he exactly needs. And are there enough Hersiers? No, there aren't. So Popsy needs to help quite significantly just now, and even though he's gonna help, there is going to be opportunity right now for Hero OP, and if Absolutes are communicating properly, they should be seeing that, and Teal should be attacking. So yeah, that's Popsy's army being away from his home base, so exactly Teal advancing forward, and yes, they are communicating, so very nice to see this team play by Absolutes B, and let's see, what else can he kill? Not much, he has a tower in there unfortunately, and gold is out, and where is the next gold? That's actually an interesting spot in the game, there is no next gold for him. <laughs> well, that, that's kinda weird. That's really kinda weird and unexpected to me. Why there is no gold, there is just one gold for a player at the back. Or blue, and where is the green one? Am I, am, am I like blind? This cannot be really his. Because there needs to be one at the back, so it's almost looking like that actually they are <laughs> having pretty unlucky map in here. Not sure, not really sure what's going on in here at all, but in the meantime of course player is right now attempting to find something to kill, waiting on the goal, hoping that his opponents are gonna finish there sooner rather than later, and actually it's a theme of the map. So it's not a map screw, because the situation is exactly the same. It's exactly the same for the teal player. He's going to be running out of gold also, at exactly the same spot. As Popsy. So no, it's not any kind of map screw, it's the same for both sides. And let's see who actually deals with it better. So far, of course, it should be a pretty significant problem for Popsy. Because he needs to go for this gold, he doesn't have anything else. He isn't gathering even anything else, because he cannot. And he needs to hope that he can actually kill enough army and enough economy of hero right here. With the help of player. And right now, this is this is a very important fight and going quite all right for Hero OP and overall Absolutes. As even though Popsy is just now sending all the army in, he probably cannot rebuild. But but Hero OP underestimated the situation and he has lost he has lost a ton of gold villages. He's not running away from this, or is he? Actually, might be with at least a few of those because it is easy finished. So you know, we have at least a few of these guys, but of course it means that those red knocking on the door are going to be not really that opposed as they could potentially could have been. In the meantime, Icaro advancing into Teya as his hero OP. So hero K just trickling in as he is just now retreating back, having a bit of fun through the back as well, hoping to deny any kind of economy. Well, definitely could be. Who just on the gold, and of course there is a pretty strong push by no student moves. Sudden moves, as Hero OP has lost a town center that was exactly expected in the front. So everybody in the heroic cage but Popsy. Which of course makes a ton of sense. Not any kind of extra upgrades being just now made. And this seems like a pretty strong push, especially looking at the at the mythic units, like the boars. They are going to be game changers, and there's not much that's seven up can be doing against them, and he needs to retreat, he doesn't have army for this, like at all, and Red will need to help him sooner rather than later, and this is definitely not enough. There is interesting push, though going on on the right side, where, I where Icaro needs to engage as well, he's already prepared in there. As player, and well, Hero OP, Hero OP actually might become a mythic page. Not sure, but he's getting ready on the gold. With player asking for the flies with flaming weapons, you're OP coming for them as well. What? He just cast flaming weapons on literally one Hersier. About two Hersiers. 
Yeah, well, that, <laughs> that was pretty good panic. That was just panic play, like absolutely panic play. He has absolutely no army. He didn't even have it before. So that's absolutely wasted flaming weapons. But he mustn't forget that even though his, his battle is going quite well and probably is going to finish quite all right for uh, the Fate 2 team, on the left there is equally interesting fight going on from Thomas Shelby who is pushing on 7-up. And 7-up, well, he's doing a pretty good job defending so far. He's having the frost, so he's basically waiting for the flaming weapons from sudden moves. So that he can freeze them all together. But it's apparently not going to be happening anytime soon. And he is hoping that he can force them a bit sooner than anything else. But I'm kinda curious why he isn't using the bars to tank the damage and get on the TC. I kinda think that he really needs to. Because seven up right now is through Balder. And how much he doesn't actually have all that many villages? He's having like 30. <laughs> That would be really sucky Ragnarok, I don't think it would be working all that well for him. But Hero OP is much more importantly dropped to zero TCs. And he doesn't seem to be in any kind of good shape like at all. He's losing a ton of economy in here. Let's check. Hero OP is down to, wow, about 18, 18 to 17 citizens. 7up <laughs> is at 25, so that would be 25 Ragnarok. That's not gonna happen. That's like not gonna happen at all. 7up right now fr finally forced into the frost. And that will of course open him to the opportunity of the flamey weapons from sudden moves. And Ragnarok is really coming in. Really coming in on about 25 citizens. With just copper mail and copper weapons. And he's hoping that actually he can kill his opponent before the frost is over. Yeah, well, good luck killing the opponent in 30 seconds. They are probably thinking that Absolute B are on the verge of defeat. Which they definitely aren't. They most definitely aren't. Even though Hero OP is at zero TCs, he's still very much in the game, at least with a few units. But much more importantly, Aikaro is basically untouched. And he's an Atlantean. He's coming for a third TC. So I'm fully expecting he's going to be aiming for the Heroic Age. He's housed. So he definitely will be. Palace. Oh, he already is Heroic Age. Sorry. <laughs> Mythical Age. That's what I wanted to say. And the Frost is off. And a bit of help is going to be right now received by all the bars from players. So that's what the help is all about. Uh, with the heroes of Ragnarok from Narvi. Okay, 7 up. The Narvi, I'm just confused by the blue color, color for some reason. It's going to be arriving in the reds and maybe even a purpose base sometime soon. But such a little army, I'm not sure if it's gonna do anything. But what did do something is player's army and it basically annihilated everything from Thomas Shelby. So yeah, Thomas Shelby is right now in pretty tough spot. I carry 3 TCs, all 3 F2s are at 1. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is the mighty Ragnarok. This really, this this is the whole mighty Ragnarok. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure if I've seen something like that before. <laughs> That's really brutal, but it's a, it's definitely doing damage right now. It's Thomas Shelby, so yeah, it's working. And Thomas Shelby is he already rebuilt somewhere, not much. Okay, these are some extra guys to help, but of course with all of this. Not going to be any kind of threat at all, but this might be a problem. These heroes of Ragnarok might not really be the one that will decide the game, but flaming weapons right now coming in are going to be turning the battle away from his base because the player needs to retreat. He doesn't have enough to flame to fight flaming weapons. That's exactly why the importance of the frost was so big in there. Even though it stopped the attack from Thomas Shelby, it gave him pretty good opportunity to basically annihilate anything that he wants. And it worked quite all right. In the meantime, Popsy has lost the TC due to the war raiding by Hero OP, who is back at one. And they're building this economy. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna see how many <laughs> how many spots where he was getting gold he lost. Exactly four. Four ox cars somehow made their way into that one gold mine because they were probably killed and raided somewhere else. In the meantime, he's already having a pretty decent army, helping with the defense and mainly Trying to catch all this raiding army that is spied upon. That's nicely played by Hero OP and quite unfortunate for Popsy, who is quite unaware that something like this is happening. And those poor guys, they are so desperately trying to find something to kill and failing at that. Yeah, that's just that. And I'm not really seeing the logic behind the Ragnarok from 7 up. I really don't. I think that actually F2 thought that they were just, just on the verge of opponents resign. But I'm not sure. I'm not certain how they could have thought that with Icaro with three TCs and untouched. <laughs> not really sure how they could have thought that. But well, is the case, and half of the army of Ragnarok is right now gonna die. 
Yeah, because of course I carry with no seven moves is right now quite nicely prepared for this kind of a deck. You know the reinforcements from seven up and seven up still just one TC. The gold is gonna run out pretty soon. 1700 left and this one, yeah, I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing how Absolutes are going to be allowing that come into the enemy hands as there's another attempt at attack and radiant as Popsy is other flame weapons but he probably doesn't have enough push he does have pretty strong army with the boss by red so he's definitely losing tc yet again and player right now coming into mythic through hell that's the first one or the second one first significant one at any rate <laughs> and yet again hero op is really 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 learning how it is to play with just no tc left so Player seems to be basically the most important player of the game, quite, quite literally. Uh, but it's almost looking like that Thomas Shelby is going to be really, really important, especially with the Mythic Lay just now. And are they going to be casting just now? Yes, they are. Actually, I actually think it might have been cast slightly later. Uh, I don't really agree with casting Fimbul Winter just without any kind of support. Uh, because if it was cast at the time when either he was right next to his base, he would be getting a lot of super strong goofies to help him in the fight, that's the first first case. And second, if he potentially waited for some kind of boss raiding or something like that from Hero OP, he could have just basically augmented the effect. So yeah, I don't get this. I don't get this because Fimble Winter doesn't cause your opponent to retreat with army. It just doesn't because there's no point for the half minute. And even though you might be losing some economy for half a minute, it's just not such a huge blow as it potentially could be in combination with your army. So yeah, kind of weird got mythical got power usage so far in this game, both Ragnarok and this Fimble Winter. Uh, but it seems to be working quite all right for what Thomas Shelby wants to do. So yep, okay, if it works for him, quite fine. He's gonna get the TC that is the front of actually seven up. So it's going to be his third. Yeah, there are just two TCs still left. <laughs> Apparently, Icaro stole one from Hero OP, who is just here again for the second time attempting to finish his main TC in this game. And in the meantime, for the opponents, as they are moving on the left into the gold mine, which is super important right now, super important stage of the game. Pop, uh, player is at 3, Popsy at 2, 7 up at 1, and 7 up is not going anywhere because he doesn't have any free town centers left. It's like that this is not going to be all that easy for Thomas Shelby as he potentially hoped. Especially if looking at all the myth units. Yeah, it's not gonna be that easy. He doesn't micro properly. So far he seems to not. Oh no, they are enough. Enough for Winaxman to get rid of the Hersiers. And I'm also looking at the battlefield on the right. How's it looking between green and teal? Teal is having a bit of fun with him. Apparently on the gold, right? Yes, right on top of the gold. Uh, but blue, rather, no, <laughs> green. It's not really far away. Been even more battle bars, about five of those, and that's of course something that so far Hero OP cannot deal with at this stage of the game. So, yep, nicely played by Popsy, but he still needs to position this Oxcard a bit better. So it's actually a pretty clever idea right now by Hero OP getting rid of the Oxcard rather than the villagers, as it will result into quite significant inefficiency. As in the meantime, player is raiding still with the battle bars and trying to find something to kill. A bit more. Why? I'm slightly confused at this design. Probably resulted from this. From this radian on the gold villages. Th that's probably the reason. That has to be the reason because I don't see any other reason. Looking especially at this <laughs> huge squad of Steam Falian birds. But yeah. It has to be said, it was slowly aiming there, but it was nowhere near there yet. They were having the population advantage. And I'm not exactly sure why Icaro wasn't all that much more significant in the game. Because he was basically undisturbed all the game. He was at 3 TCs, he should have been boomed quite brutally at 22 minutes. That he's not in the Mythic Lage is really kind of beyond me at this stage. But yeah, he had to fight, he had to save his friends quite a lot, so that might be the reason. And his game wasn't really all that maybe you could have expected. He's having at least having Murmelos, that's pretty decent. But otherwise, the right side was slowly getting out of their hand. And the mythical units from the enemy Locus were just getting better and better. And player was just playing really well. Really well, and his raiding with the boss was quite significant. And significant even enough to even force the raiding and resigning from their opponents.
Yep, those ratings were quite nice indeed. So let's check into the post game where we are looking at player deservedly claiming the MVP. The MVP in here, and that's pretty much the player who deserved it <laughs> the most. So you can see the super strong economy from Icaro. Like absolutely super strong compared to the opponents. Let's compare it with the second best. That's 5,000, 8,000. Oh, six them, let's say. So that's 11,000 more resources than the second best, who is also on his team. So they were having super economies, absolutes, and they were oh, unable to actually make it count. It's kind of, I don't know, not exactly sure where it went all that wrong for them. They were playing really well. Maybe the surprise double on Hero OP that actually caused in the TC, that might have been the, the moment. That the game went actually kind of shitters for them. Yeah, that was a moment that wasn't really that great. Okay then, GG.